everyone, uh, as you probably know, this is the AEF Spark Up webinar, and there's actually a series of quite a few episodes. So this is the first one, and what are we talking about today? Pitches, online pitches. Online pitching tips, that's right. Now, before that's we start, uh, that's a test question. Now, should we maybe, I don't know, introduce ourselves? Just yeah, no, go bit? ahead, go ahead. Okay, well, hi, my name is uh, MC Melody. If you've been uh, active in the startup scene or if you are part of the AEF community, you've probably seen me hosting some of their events uh, one way or another. And uh, what about, let's see, what else do I do? Actually, oh yeah, so I teach everyone about online and offline public speaking skills. Very and important. Very important, in oh, like you world. need that. Yeah. But in, another thing is um, I actually make an online course that teaches people how to do professional video conferences also very important yes hopefully yes. And in, in times of covid everyone needs to know everyone 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 and how about how about you i know this guy's face is quite familiar <laughs> no i don't do anything all oh, right um, so really. why are you here <laughs> no, no no okay so like this is mm. mc melody um i will be vc chibo for today um so. and so i have been investing in early stage tech startups for over 10 years. Mm. It's a long time. Um, and yeah, I mean, I'm here to talk about what we look for as venture capitalists uh, mm. from these entrepreneurs when they're pitching us. Right. And you know, in, in these times, everyone's doing it online. We're doing Zoom calls. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't, let, let's see what's different about it. I know. Well is a start. Everything's online. This this segment is no exception. So mm. we have two iPads in front of us. Are we supposed to do something with this? Mine says compelling. Mine says five minute pitch. Okay, I'll start first. Okay, because, well, what are you going to do with that? Because mine looks uh, more self-explanatory. So. <laughs> I don't know. Um, well, I think this question is, is for you. So if uh -huh. you only give a five minute pitch time for a founder, that's mm -hmm. usually the typical time, mm -hmm. plus or minus, what is it that you want to hear about? And what, what are you really looking for in a pitch? Mm -hmm. What's the hidden agenda that you got? Um, no, no, there's really no hidden agenda, you know? Like, mm -hmm. we are very open, you know, and open-minded and mm -hmm. looking for great people and great ideas. Um, you know, like, wh when you come in and you meet a venture capitalist, you should definitely, you know, like, feel, feel confident, right? right. You should definitely be able to present yourself and what your company is doing um, in the best possible light. Make sure that you um, talk about how it's different from what else is in the market, mm -hmm. right? You need to also talk about the market, right? Right. You need to catch the attention of the VC, right? Because usually, you know, like we, we invest in companies that um, really need to hit it big, right? We're, we're looking for the next unicorn. Right. Um, and so if an entrepreneur comes in and, you know, they talk about something that is, you know, maybe like a smaller market, a little bit niche. Mm. Um, you know, this is something, I'm just like creating a new product, but it's, you know, it, it's tough to grow into a, like a whole business or like a company, then, you know, that's less interesting, right? So you need to like be able to wild the, uh, wild the VC by saying, right. okay, well, look, this is like this huge opportunity. There's this like, you know, compelling problem. Oh, compelling problem <laughs> um, that, you know, we need to solve, right? Mm. And, you know, we're the right people to do it, right? And so that's the last part. There's market, there's business model, and there's people, right? Mm. And so, like, you know, then you, you talk about your people. And that's actually the most important part. Hmm. Through the whole conversation and the whole pitch, we're actually looking at you and seeing, like, okay, well, is this someone that I could get behind? Right. right? Is this someone who I feel like could make an impact in the world? Hmm. Um, and, you know, I, I think that those are really things that you need to think about. And they need to do this in five minutes. You know, sometimes it doesn't even take five minutes, right? I mean, I've seen people who are so impressive. They walk in the room. They're like, look, this is me. This is what I'm doing. 30 seconds in, I'm like, damn. Wow. 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 I want to I back this guy. That is really condensed. But that is true. I guess with that aura, sometimes, mm -hmm. especially with the confidence in that kind of, uh, that, that energy, you mm -hmm. can feel it in the first, like, 10 oh, seconds. Oh, yeah, for sure. A lot of it is aura. Mm. How, how do you, how do you, uh... How, how do you think? I'm trying about to say. Aura? I, I want to say. I want to okay, say what's I, on I your iPad. My, my iPad is locked. <laughs> <laughs> but I think I remember it was saying compelling. Do we need that on screen? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So mm. I guess you know we talked about Aura. Mm -hmm. um, and you know when when you think about online pitches or online presentations, what makes those? more compelling. Ooh, wow, that's a million dollar question. It's like, you gotta like bribe me under a table for me to speak. No, just kidding. 
<laughs> don't have to bribe me. Let me, you just, let me see what I have. You just have to motivate me. Okay, well, for, for me, because I'm, well, I think I don't see the um, the startups nearly as often mm -hmm. as, as you, but I always see it when they're on stage. You mm. probably see them before they're right, on stage right, as right, well. Right, right. But there's a, uh, some things I actually see, like I think for me, for you, if it's the ten, first 10 seconds, you can feel it. Oh, yeah. Sometimes I'm kind of like making side bets with myself and I was like, no, that guy's not gonna Prove make me wrong. it. Prove me wrong. Exactly. So um, there's a few things. Um, I think just like with any videos, especially how we're doing video presentations mm -hmm. now, um, I think having that hook is important. Mm -hmm. Like because otherwise, how can you get someone's attention in like ten seconds? Oh, yeah. Otherwise, um, you know, people just aren't going to listen. Especially with the attention span that we have for the online events, it's just not going to fly. Mm -hmm. um, another thing is, is there a product clear? Because I, I'm sure you can relate to this. There's some pitches where by the time they finish, I'm like, what's this guy selling? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think that yeah, they drone on. Yeah. On. Like it seems like an obvious thing to say, but then a lot of people actually miss it. And also maybe. To to actually put it into a story that people can relate to mm -hmm. um, because uh, when these VCs come in, they're not exactly like your fans. You're not talking to your fans. Mm -hmm. It would be a different story if they mm -hmm. are. But these people, you're trying to elicit their interest. So you're trying to think, what is it? what is in it for them, right. right? And what is it that they can relate to? So sometimes um, I, I think being too immersive into like me, 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 mm -hmm. it kind of distances and people just don't want to listen. Sure. Um, and another thing is, especially with the um, talking head videos that you see on Zoom meetings um, when we do video, is that I try to stay away from 100% talking head. Mm -hmm. Maybe have like a picture in picture with your deck mm. or maybe try to interact with some props or whatever because that attention span is just way too short. Right. Yeah, yeah, from yeah, my yeah. experience, anything more than like two minutes with a talking head, people yeah. just, they just phase out. It's just the way that our brains right. work. Right. Um, now, another thing is uh, with the normal, uh, the physical uh, pitches, it's easier to get your attention because you're sitting right in front of them mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you see more of them. Whereas for the video part, you only see what this much right, if right, you're right. lucky. Right. And I think you but I think even just in the previous pitches in the finale, we've actually seen like uh, technical glitches where uh, people's internet are kind of having these ups and downs mm -hmm. and there's parts where you can't really hear them. Yeah, 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 you cut out. And But the thing is, as a presenter, I think we have to do our due diligence and make sure that people actually receive our messages. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. if there's- You know what I found is helpful actually? Like what? I've actually found that like, you know, in the middle of your pitch, mm. actually you cut into like a video part. Yeah. Right, like you, you have different segments of your presentation. You mm -hmm cut into a video that like describes your product that like you know shows your business in action or you you know talking to different people right like a corporate video right I know that sounds cheesy and like normally like in offline pitches mm -hmm. you, you know like you don't need really need that because it's so interactive already right um, but you know I found that in virtual pitches it's been helpful uh -huh. so this is speaking from the VC mm -hmm. Woohoo! Mm -hmm. and also I think is that flow um, especially on video when people need this um, like when when people will actually watch the delay live right. as well right so when people are like on watching back it's like what's this guy trying to do because it's like this can disconnected pieces of information right, right, right. so that flow is very important and last but not least um, as I just mentioned before is think in the audience perspective mm -hmm. which is in your perspective because these people are not here to just listen to your dream mm. of just the dream itself they mm -hmm. need to see like you know how doable is it with the market right. what kind of homework you've done so think right. in their perspective right. do homework find out who who these right. guys are that's uh that's my yeah. word of advice i feel like it's important to be able to paint the problem and paint yeah. um you know the, the 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 vision of what you want to do but at the same time you also need to bring that down into something more fundamental and something that you can actually implement Right? Mm -hmm. Like, what are the actual steps that you guys have been taking to follow that up? Like, for us, I mean, like, we're, we're institutional investors. We like to see traction, right? And so we like to see, okay, well, this is great. This is, you know, this is, it seems like a, there's a real opportunity in the market, but how are you guys addressing this and what have you done to date? Exactly. Right? I mean, I think that those are very important to, to include. Right. So that's, that's how to make your, um, presentation a bit more compelling just to get these guys interest mm -hmm. now. Um, maybe I should ask you another question. Cause I know there's another one in here somewhere. Yeah. Nope, don't shake it. Why am I shaking my iPad? Okay, there we go. Top five. Okay, so this actually means what are the essential components mm -hmm. of an effective pitch? Now, the reason why it says top five is because we can say a gazillion things. So I know in your perspective, what's the top five in no particular order? Right, I'm trying to, th I'm trying to think of five right now. Uh, what? Give me, okay, give me one. Give me one. <laughs> okay, essential components of an effective pitch. Mm, in um, your eyes. 
needs to be real,、hmm? right? It needs to be real. It, like it, it, you, you need to be genuine.、Hmm. You need to,、um, you know, have like a real element in it, right? Whether that's in in the storytelling part of it when you're when you're、uh, discussing the problem,、uh, whether that's you know talking about the business model、hmm. um, and how you've really gone about implementing it.、Um, You know whether that's about you know like how how you want to relate to investors, right? Like、mm-hmm. I feel like being genuine is 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 super important because it's really about the connection between you and the investor, right? Right. And on Zoom or on online, that connection is even harder to build,、mm. right? Because you know when you're face to face, there there is a rapport there, right? You you get more trust, I, I feel. Um, but when it's online, I mean, it's so easy to zone out. It's so easy to just like not be able to see like what a person is really like. So. Especially online, you really need to find some way to relate in a more real way、mm. um, with the person that you're trying to talk to. Do you think the eye? Like one thing, actually, one immediate thing that actually came to the top of my head. Do you think eye contact lacks more so in a video call than it is in real person?、Because、oh yeah, for sure. Because like I like for me, like when I'm on these webinars or like when I'm on Zoom,、mm. like I don't know where the camera is, right? Like I'm looking at the screen because I'm looking at like the screen share,、right. or I'm looking at the the talking head over here, and then like obviously that's not where the camera is.、Ooh. And so I'm always looking like in different places. I'm sure like in this webinar, you guys will see as well. Like I'm not looking at you guys most of the time. So don't don't be like him if you're trying to pitch. <laughs> Make sure you're talking.、Yeah. Yeah, because it makes a huge difference.、Um, that's that probably actually relates to what you're saying. When people are trying to connect to、mm-hmm. that person through the camera,、right. first you have to look into the camera.、Mm-hmm. But a lot of times we're actually looking at the screen. Oh yeah. Yeah. I I, I, I think that reminds me of one other thing. You know, like so I, I will gradually add on to my list of five. So、okay. maybe eventually we'll get there. But、okay. right now I'm at two.、Mm. <laughs> you're so, working towards that. Yeah. Right. 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 So I, I think like you know it's also important、um, to not. Get into your own kind of groove, so to speak, and just like in your own track, and like not allow for interaction, right? Like I feel like, especially in these virtual talks, like founders often will just keep talking, right? Because they they want to avoid that awkward silence,、yes. um, which comes in the middle of you know you don't know if the other guy's paying attention or doing something else or whether he's just like pondering your last point. And then, like entrepreneurs would be like, try to fill up that silence by like just very quickly adding something in or like just like some filler.、Mm. Um, and and I would just encourage them, you know, just allow for pauses, right?、Mm. Momentary pauses where you can, where the investor can jump in, ask a question, like you know, digest a little bit of what you've said.、Mm-hmm. Because if you don't allow for that pause,、um, then You know, investors may quickly lose track of what you're trying to say, right. right? Because you just keep piling things in, and they haven't been able to digest yet. That's right.、Um, so yeah, I mean, I feel like be, real, like face-to-face interactions are so、uh, more, so much more interactive and dynamic because there are like opportunities for investors to jump in, right? And it becomes more of a discussion. You always want like a pitch to be more of a discussion, more engaged. Than just like one on one, right? That's right. Actually, I've seen、uh, a few of those moments that you just mentioned, and it's actually really hard when you do it online. Not just a dead air thing, yeah, yeah, yeah. because it's really weird. Oh, you must like, have seen that so much as an MC. And plus, of course, and plus the technical glitches when you have like an internet delay、mm-hmm. sometimes because you can't control the yeah, other yeah, party's yeah.、Uh, internet speed. And I'm sure you you guys will actually face that one, at one point or another. Is when with that、uh, with that delay, and then the people are thinking, and you're thinking, and then all these like. Two seconds pile up. You probably have like eight seconds of nothing.、Mm-hmm. So for me as a moderator,、right. of course, I have to take that into account and just make. I would hate to、make... be in your shoes. No,、oh, <laughs> sometimes. Did you want to swap? Actually, we should swap right, our positions. Maybe I'll be MC Chibo. Exactly, and I'll be VC Melody. That's actually pretty cool. <laughs> pretty but yes, but don't you have to overcome that awkward silence because we、mm-hmm. do need to take that technology and all that processing time into、mm-hmm. account. Okay, so we're at two now.、Mm-hmm. So do you have anything to pile onto your essential components? Really, I was just about to go back to my iPad. I've been talking. What? About okay. So <laughs> that I think that actually included actually a lot of things. Should we leave it、mm-hmm. at that? Let's do that. Okay, yeah, let's do that. All right. So next. So I actually, <laughs> so so I actually, I'm laughing because I on my, my iPad I have a top five as well. What? And what's so a, what's a I top think、five? my top five for you would be, you know, what are your top five tips for giving a great online presentation? 
Well, well, we do actually, well, because as we said, because of the COVID, everyone's do, doing everything online. Mm -hmm. Now, five tips, these are not in any particular order. So it's not, the first one's no, is no less or more important than the fifth one. So mm -hmm. I'll just kind of do it in the sequence, I guess, or no, non-sequence. First is the gesture and your voice. Now, mm -hmm. people are like, you know, they, they know how to dress up and everything to some extent. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of times we don't pay attention to our gesture because you're so limited to almost like a news anchor kind of frame. Right. So everything below your feet is almost like you're hiding behind a podium now. Oh, that reminds me of my next tip. What? Let me get back to that. All right. So, so it's almost like hiding behind the podium. So for public speaking, I always tell my students, don't hide behind the podium unless mm -hmm. you have to, mm -hmm. because you might feel a bit more secure, but we see that much less of mm. you. So when you're trying to express yourself, we, we, you, you have a lot more constraints. Mm -hmm. And second of all, in terms of your voice, amp it up a little bit. Mm. I know when you hear, like when we watch a playback, we actually sound pretty normal right. here. But if we actually look at like the real setting here, mm -hmm. me and him, first of all, we're talking a little bit louder than normal. I and talk like this normally. I mean, I'm, I'm a pretty loud guy sometimes. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> you know what they did to the microphone, right? So, okay. So another thing is um, when we act normal, I'm not telling you to be fake right, about it. Okay. Right. So that's the disclaimer. You don't have to pretend to be something that you're not. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be fake. You don't have Definitely. to on an act, but makeup, um, gestures, and voice, when it's normal in front of the camera, it looks bleh. Mm -hmm. that, when I say that to girls, they're like, yeah, because camera makeup uh, actually is It's the same is thing as like stage makeup. makeup, right? It's so like over the top when you see them in person. When, exactly, but, but it's normal yeah. on camera. So it's the same thing when you're actually speaking into a camera. Just amp it up a little bit more because otherwise it'll just sound like we're mm -hmm. not happy. Mm -hmm. And another thing is um, appearance and your visuals. As I said, a lot of people pay attention to what we wear, mm -hmm. the waist up, because that's all you see. Um, yes and no, um, because you never, for me, I always kind of just go one step more because I never know when the camera guys right. are actually going to pan down. Right, like right, maybe right. you brought something and they're, okay, let's take a look at it. Right. And then suddenly you saw my pajamas. <laughs> what, are the, what camera guys are these? <laughs> <laughs> they do it because when you're sitting on a couch, when, you, when someone right, brings right, a prop, right, they'll be like, okay, let's take a right, look. Right, it's like, right, no. Right, right. And um, with the deck, I think less is more. I mm -hmm. don't know if you would agree, but mm -hmm. there's a lot of people who go to the other end of the uh, right. spectrum where they put everything. Right, right. Yeah, so keep it simple. And I think for, for me, um, I think maybe don't put everything on there so that we still, so it forces people to listen to mm -hmm. you. Do you. Would you agree? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I, well, there's always like that, that spectrum, right? Mm -hmm. You never want to be on either end of those. Exactly. Right? I mean, you have to find the right balance. Mm -hmm. And as she, with all things in life, she was going to share with us where exactly that that <laughs> is. <laughs> and uh, story storytelling, yes, we say that over and mm -hmm. over again. People like to hear stories, but dialogue is just as important, especially mm. for the online sessions, because. As we mentioned, sometimes you don't even know if the other person heard mm -hmm. your whole entire thing, like in terms of, you know, delays, yeah. lags, and audio stuff. Like, can we actually have a dialogue? Because sometimes we need to pause mm -hmm. and just make sure right. people can process and people can acknowledge that, mm -hmm. you know, you heard me. So like that. And another thing is, um, I, I don't know if you would actually think the same, but from my experience, sometimes people walk in uh, with, a, with a great story, but then it's almost like they forgot why they're here mm. like there's no call to action it's not clear in terms of what they're asking for right. they're just telling right. you their story right. but right. they don't know what to do with it yeah, or yeah. Th it's not conveyed to you yeah no sometimes sometimes we see that too right even in like pitch competitions like there'll be startups on stage they'll be like talking about what they do and then at the end, and then at the end they're like actually we're not fundraising yes oh and we're, yes. And we're all just like oh hey well <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Good for you. Well, oh, actually, I, I I remember that. I actually saw a few that was right, like that. Right. Yeah. No, I remember that. <laughs> yeah. Or the or the first. That's the yeah. first thing that they yeah, say, yeah, and I'm like, yeah. what? <laughs> <laughs> and right. last, I think um, we have to think again in your perspective, in mm -hmm. our audience perspective, is what are they here for, and are, have we satisfied their need? Um, what is it in for them, and are mm -hmm. we providing some sort of edutainment so for you maybe we're not here to educate you guys mm -hmm. but we're here to give you what you want right. to give you the value but at the same time are you kind of entertained because this stuff can be quite dry frankly some of this technology as great as it is for you guys mm -hmm. and I'm sure it's fabulous it might be world changing but we might want to jazz it up a little bit so right. that we can absorb the information right, right, right. so I always say edutainment um, just make sure people are a little bit entertained because with the thing of internet right, right now everyone I think the part 
the the bar has actually gone up. Mm. We have. A, I would appreciate some entertainment. I mean, I, exactly. I go through dry pitches all the time. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so there we go. So this right. this guy right here can use use them spicing up. <laughs> okay. No. No. So mm. so before we move on, like I, I needed you, to jump in because I, I totally had like a what? corollary from one of your like second or third tips. I think it was. You also mentioned the thing about mute. Yeah. Yeah. Like when you're when you're like you know not talking, mm. make sure you mute. Because, you know, even if you're just eating or drinking, I mean, no one else wants to hear that. Nobody. Right? Like, and it's just the etiquette of this. Oh, oh we have definitely. a question on that, right? Yeah, actually, we'll, oh, we'll see okay, that Can I just later. jump that? Because that's my next slide. Okay, oh. well, um, yeah, sure. Okay, go, do it. Do video it. Video etiquette. Video what etiquette. What are your tips around video etiquette? Okay, so video etiquette, that's a very good question. Because mm. there are some very obvious ones. Well, I guess still not so obvious because this online no, conference thing is new. quite new to some people, so maybe it'll benefit somebody mm -hmm. else. Some of them are quite unspoken because people are, are embarrassed to tell you or they just there's nothing in it for them to tell you. It might destroy some relationship mm -hmm. and makes it embarrassing, right. so they right. don't tell you. So I'll, I'll do some obvious and not so obvious ones. Um, don't ghost the people. Mm. Um, so meaning do show video, do show your audio. I think there's a problem in Asia. Why? Like people are just not as you know, accustomed to showing video, yeah. I feel like. I force people to. I right. Yeah, I don't talk to them if they don't right. show. So right. it pushes them out of their comfort zone. It's one of the house rules. Mm -hmm. uh, show your video, show your audio, um, unless you're taking a sip of whatever, mm -hmm. then, then mute it. Um, and also, another problem, another thing that I keep saying, maybe you have experience in it too, is you don't know when they're actually finished. Mm -hmm. And you want to jump in, but then they're, and then they start to pick right, up. It's like right. what? Right, or right, you don't right. know when. Especially for, for people who like to talk a lot, then just like they just keep rolling. Exactly. Well, sometimes <laughs> when you have the Zoom with many people, right. you don't know who's the next guy to talk. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I guess a moderator would help, but mm. even when you don't have one, sometimes we just have to make it that obvious. It's mm -hmm. like, oh, thanks so much for that. Now mm -hmm. let's move on to who. Good point. Yeah, and just make it really obvious mm -hmm. who's talking next. Uh, next one, uh, I talk. So I don't about, like cut in like. Like I do well, all the time that's okay. on this webinar. VC Shibo can do it. <laughs> <laughs> but with energy level, make sure you keep it up. Think about happy things. Mm. You should be happy because you're seeing people that you want to see. Mm -hmm. You're talking about things. Mm -hmm. But you should be happy though because, you know, for people who's happy to see you because mm -hmm. He's a money guy, mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and we have we're very passionate about our topics. So I don't see any reason not to be mm -hmm. like not to be energetic, but do bring that on the camera. Yeah. Uh, so do think about happy thoughts because, as I said, being normal on camera. Yeah, no, there really was this sucks. like this one pitch recently where just like the founder was just so low key and just so monotone. Oh, no. I was really like, oh my gosh, is your startup okay? I mean, you must be going through some difficult times, right? I mean, oh, when you're pitching to an investor and you're just like flatlining there, it's just, oh, geez. it just doesn't make me feel very confident about how you guys are doing. That energy, it's contagious, isn't mm -hmm, it? Mm -hmm. And also virtual backgrounds. I know with technology now, you can do very nice virtual background with the Golden Gate Bridge right, or right. sometimes I've seen Teletubbies. What, what type of virtual background do you prefer? I don't use virtual backgrounds. Oh, you don't? Because they're not that promising. Because sometimes I can actually lean forward and back or right. part of the green screen picks up on right, me and right. I look like I'm fading. Right. And well, that's okay, right? I mean, it's just like the limitations of technology yeah, right now. Yeah, but because understand. they're pre-recorded. And <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't want that. And mm -hmm. and also sometimes when you pick the really fun ones, mm -hmm. it's only fun for the first few seconds right. until it gets really distracting. Yeah. Like teletubbies? Mm, no. Food and drinks. Right. Is that one kind of obvious when people are eating and drinking? Oh yeah, that's on that one's. Yeah, I just, I just, I haven't seen that thankfully. Oh. So, are you serious? Now? Yeah. Oh. Well, I, I've been like for pitches. I guess people are more mindful. Mm, okay. Yeah. Good. Because for online presentations, I've seen a lot of people. It's like just hold on and <laughs> <laughs> not cool. Um, another thing is focus. Um, mm -hmm. It sounds really obvious. This one is kind of like obvious and not so obvious. How do you show you're focused in a, an online session? I don't know. How do you? Exactly. That that's a million dollar question. Mm. Is look into the only place where you should look at the camera, like right there. Like you don't have to like you look at it that you weird everyone out, but do Keep have that eye it. contact because as much as is much blink. more. No, that's that's just weird. <laughs> that's just weird. Do blank, but you can look away, but do don't forget the camera. Right. Yeah, and the guy that's next right, to you right. if there's one. And last. Don't forget to introduce and say goodbye. Because people are so relaxed when they're at mm -hmm. home, they sometimes forget the etiquette of mm. you know any meeting. Introduce the people, who are they, why are they here, and when you leave, come on, say goodbye. Don't just boom. 
Yeah. That's a good choice. That's actually That's not a good cool. Tip. Okay, and for this next one, because they, they look kind of similar. Maybe I'll just kind of merge them into one. Now, okay. first of all is how do we get your attention? Mm -hmm. And second of all, what is it that turns you off from like at an online pitch? Mm. <clears throat> an online pitch. Okay, yeah. well, look, I mean, I, I think the good news is that when I'm signing on to a webinar or like when I'm signing on to a Zoom call or a hmm. pitch, um, you already have my attention, right? Oh, yeah. So, so the, key, the key here is how not to lose my attention. That is true. Right? I mm. mean, you know, it, whether it's like a 30-minute call or an hour-long call, I mean, how do you keep my attention through all of that, right? And I think, look, I mean, it's a lot of what we talked about before, right? I mean, it's just like, don't drone, mm. leave room for kind of discussion mm. and dialogue, you know, make sure you hit, like, the important points, like, because I, like, I, I hear people just, like, adding in fluff, and I know that it's fluff, because mm. I've just heard so much fluff before, right? right? So just make sure you're concise, you make sure you hit the key points, what I want to hear in terms of like the, the, the problems, the solutions, where you guys are at, what you guys are looking for. I mean, and, and, and it's like, and it's, it's easy, you know, 30 minutes goes by really quick. Okay, so, but is it, if there's one thing I can ask um, mm -hmm. that really turns you off, is that one thing you're like, okay, I'm done. Is there that one thing? Um, you know, maybe like, and I said this before. I mean, maybe it's like just the overuse of buzzwords. It's just yes. like some entrepreneurs will just mm. like to throw like everything that's hot and like trending right now in like the startup space into their pitch, and it's just like, okay, well, why don't you just pick one and talk about it and how you guys are making an impact there? Because I just like as an early stage company, like I just can't believe or I can't see you being like an expert in like five different like world changing technologies. Yeah, and right. that goes back to being genuine, right? Yeah. Like, don't oversell exactly, yourself. Exactly, exactly. And these guys yeah. have heard everything, so we, there's we really no have. need to yeah. fluff it up. Okay, so let's take a look at the next one. On webcam, that's, uh, that's the key word. And the question is, mm. What do you need to do to prepare before you go on the webcam? <sighs> that's, a, that's actually a very good question. See, a lot of people would think all you have to do is just turn on that iPad or, mm -hmm. or iPhone mm -hmm. or just a phone and point it to yourself. It's mm -hmm. actually a lot more than that. But I'll kind of... the hair. And, yeah. Well, not too. But I, I guess um, do your mic check. Do your, um, you know, your audio check. Make sure it's good. Your mm -hmm. Wi-Fi. Your lighting. Because what we think is normal here may not be normal to right, the camera. Right, right. And um, like before we begin, like the angle of your face. Like right, are you right, making... Right yourself look awkward because those hey, few so I have inches. like a really like real life question here mm. like in terms of like you know when you mentioned the angle right yeah a lot of people are using like their laptop when you're when you're doing like your your zoom calls right and the laptop opens this way and then there's always going to be like this open angle to it right and so you're always kind of looking at like you know the bottom of your face correct how do you what do you do to everything eye level it should be at eye level one way or another really so it, you prop it up yeah it looks really weird in normal life because you don't right. need your laptop that high right. but you need and then your is it camera. like a 90 degree angle or do you want to like overcompensate so you're looking like down at me mm. No, I usually have it at straight up at eye level. Okay. Yeah, because any right. yeah, and, it, and it's just nicer to edit too. Right, yeah, right, if you right, want right. something that's, that's like straight up, and um, also do test runs. I will mm -hmm. say that over and over again. Do the rehearsals with yourself because mm -hmm. sometimes you just don't know unless you watch a yeah, playback. That makes sense. Um, for me personally, because of my industry, like um, I focus a lot on the audio because if you try to put it to test and you have a very good video, like HD, full HD, but then there's a lot of noise and distraction you can't actually sit through that video mm -hmm. but whereas if you have a so-so video like maybe like you know not exactly HD but then you have really crystal clear sound you right. can actually sit through that one oh. yeah so make sure for, you're not eating anything on that one mm, that too <laughs> and make sure you're cleaning up the ambient right, noise right, right. Uh, and also for the script in the deck a lot of people will tell me I don't need a script because I know my stuff the best, mm -hmm. but then that's actually not true because it's almost like you're recording a video. Mm -hmm. You might need, sometimes you, um, you need to have delay live or mm -hmm. also it's pre-recorded. Right, right. So right. you do actually need a script of some sort just to keep yourself Kind of wish track. I had a script right now. Mm, yeah, okay, make him a script. <laughs> <laughs> 
But the thing is, um, even if you don't need it, it's just nice to have there, mm -hmm. just so that you're not missing anything and that you're actually on the right track, on the mm -hmm. right rundown. Um, even if it's just a simple rundown, that actually goes a very long way. Um, another thing is set the scene, um, because all people are seeing is right here, and unless you're really filling up that whole screen with, or, or is that close, right. or that well, but then the stuff at the back actually matters because mm -hmm. some people put a backdrop. Sometimes it's branding stuff. It's good advertisement too, that's right? True. That's true. Um, visually stimulating items. Sometimes it's the product itself, right? Right. right, um, right. So whatever it is, make sure you have it in there. Could you do that in a virtual background? Mm, you can, but then, um, as I say, virtual backgrounds sometimes they don't work out as yeah. nice. So, but that goes into the rehearsal. Right, right, if it works, right. then yeah, you can. But mm -hmm. um, make sure you do try that out and don't go for the stuff that's too distracting, right. because otherwise it right. just doesn't work. And last is the contingency plans. Um, I know a lot of people don't really think about it. It's like, hey, what if there's dead air because of delays? What if there's tech issues? What if people aren't responding? Mm -hmm. What if your script is gone? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, the screen goes blank um, and it's live. What if the video and the audio is bad? Like, do you actually have plans in case those things happen, right? right, right? right. Um, so that's something that we have to bear in mind just yeah, to keep yeah. the answer short. I that's feel like a lot of that comes with just practice too, right? So that like. Too? You know, like if you're if you're pitching like an important investor and you feel like this guy is, you know, potentially be like a, one of your lead investors, um, you know, make sure you have a series of pitches leading up to that, right? Exactly. You don't want to be, you don't want your first pitch to be practiced on that guy. Right? Exactly. When, when they say like, you know, when you fail, don't yeah. fail in public or don't right. fail on a large scale. Mm -hmm. So that's exactly what it is. Mm -hmm. Why, why is a one line description that important in a pitch? Hmm. Is it because you guys have short attention spans? Um, I think, you know, I, I think maybe it is. <laughs> is it? <laughs> but, you know, I think it's also that, like, we like our entrepreneurs to be able to, you know, crystallize what they're doing hmm. and, you know, just be able to extract, like, the key element of, you know, what they want to do, right? Because a lot of people, you know, when they, when they try to add too much, like, um, you know, like, words or too much, like, themes or like buzzwords again, mm. right? I mean, you lo they lose sight of what problem they're really trying to solve, right? And then right. if you lose sight of that, then, you know, that, that actually leads on to, you know, you don't know how to make your strategy. You right. don't know how to implement that strategy. You don't know what's important, right? Mm. Like I was talking to like founders today and it was just like, okay, well, you know, if, if you know, revenue driving businesses um, or revenue driving parts of your team are going to be like the most critical for the survival of your company in the next six to 12 months, mm. then, you know, everything non-revenue generating becomes second priority, right. right? And so like that actually impacts, you know, how you think about resource allocation. Hmm. Um, and so like if you're not able to crystallize exactly what you are trying to do in like one succinct sentence or right. like one succinct, it doesn't have to be like that just being like, you know, mm. nitpicky, right. but just like one succinct idea. Mm -hmm. um, then, you know, it's very easy to go off the rails and, you know, just like start investing in like different things that That's are not, true. you know, important to your core. Oh. Oh, so okay, so I guess so it's not just the attention span because mm -hmm. I mean that's par probably part of it because you guys see right. so many of them right, like right. you know in a short period of right. time. But if they can't um, condense it, they, it yeah. actually it it means there's other problems too. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. It, it's it's a it's a it's a true indicator of like how they view their own business, right? right. So it's like I don't know, like it in in like pitches and in the VC startup world. I mean, um, everyone tries you know gets caught up in like you know tries to stick to like oh one line description or sixty second elevator pitches, right? Mm. And that's become like a thing like even like you know business plans or business competitions are formatted like that mm. but actually I mean there's no like hard and set rule Not right sure. but the people do that because they want to be able to see that you're this entrepreneur can really you know come down like right. boil everything down to that one core thing that they're trying to do hmm. I like that so everyone remember that's actually a very good piece of advice See presentation skill <clears throat> is that is that just the the only word uh that, that that's the only word <laughs> did you okay present i'm good at reading so okay i need to extrapolate okay. now so what is presentation skills okay so how do you pivot your presentation skills from you know offline now to online what, uh, what, what do you need to what do you need to do actually that's a question that almost all of my students have asked me mm -hmm. like before they became my student because a lot because with the covid I, it kind of made everything faster that yeah. we have to do this online thing so there's a lot of people who are really seasoned speakers right. um offline but then when they do it online it's almost like a new world to them mm -hmm. um so there's a few things i think if you don't remember anything else um these ones can actually make your videos almost 
sounds like suddenly better. Right. Um, so have an anticipation for your audience needs. Actually, you need to have that kind of visualization. In that, you need to kind of imagine. Mm -hmm. Like you know how for a lot of, um, I'll give you an example for the YouTube live. You know how some girls like when they're just like eating noodles right, and they're right, talking right. to their audiences. I've they heard of these. I haven't watched. Yeah, them. it's it's the same concept. You you need to have. Well, <laughs> <laughs> you need to have an idea at least about what who these people are what is what may what what are some things that they might be feeling mm -hmm. and what is it that they want so you need to have that anticipation mm. um, and also present the questions and the scenarios to them before they even ask right be the reason why is because first it generates some sort of activities in the chat mm -hmm. because people will resonate or not resonate and uh, or resonate um, but it also shows that you're having a dialogue mm -hmm. that you're not just talking to yourself right Right. right. It's right. it's not easy to be talking to yourself. And um, as I said before, spell it out even more. Things that you think that you assume people will know, don't assume that no, they'll know. Just mm -hmm. make it crystal clear. Right. Um, and also, uh, acknowledge, make sure that you can give them a chance to acknowledge that they heard you and that they understand you, mm -hmm. which goes back to what Chibo was saying. Give that little bit of a pause because it takes time for people to type on that right, dialogue right, box right. too. Um, and also, um, the last one I think is quite important is have a two-way communication because uh, as easy as it is for us to think that we're just broadcasting into a camera what they give back to us is just as important because this right. is not news because when you broadcast news it doesn't really matter if they don't listen because you've done your job mm -hmm. but then for for here if those people aren't talking back to you you really haven't done your job yeah, because yeah. like what you're saying right if mm -hmm. they're dead silent they're right. not that interesting yeah. they're not that interested so interaction 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 and also um their attention span don't forget about that so mm -hmm. uh, make sure you attend it to the attention span first and then try to do something to uh, to get their interest because you know they're here already so. i totally agree yep last question is Mm. One minute, three minute, or ten minutes. Mm. Okay, so when you pitch, well, not when you, but mm -hmm. when you pitch an investor, how fast would you get to the point, ideally? So there's one, three, or ten. When so you get to the punchline of what you want to do, I mean, definitely within three minutes. I think, like, ideally, like, you want to throw the problem out there. Mm. And so, like, you know, the investor gets a sense of where we're going with this, right, okay. within, like, 30 seconds to, like, a minute, mm. right? Like, you, you really need to, because otherwise, if you're throwing me, like, a lot of, you know, background information and just, like, overview stuff, but, you know, like, and talking about the competitive landscape, Whoa. but I still don't know what you guys do. I mean, like, for the first, that whole part of that presentation, I'm very confused, like, Mm -hmm. I'm just like waiting for, okay, well, I need a context. This is like a context, but I need like what you're trying to do to fit in this context right. so that I can, you know, visualize and see how you fit within that, you know, mm. within all of that that you're presenting to me, right? Like if you give me like all everything but, then... All everything but. Like, yeah, everything but like the key point, <laughs> like the key thing that you're doing. And it will just leave you hanging. Then... I'm just like, oh my gosh, just please, just tell me what you're doing, right? Do you think the reverse would work for you? So if they start with the reason why you should listen and yeah. then go so into everything else. So I found like else. the best pitches I've sat in on are the entrepreneurs who come in and they tell me, look, this is a problem. This is like a big problem in the world right now. Mm. This is, you know, how many people are facing this problem and this is what we're doing to address that problem. Mm. Like if that is like your first three to five slides, three to four slides even, Mm. Two to three slides, whatever it is. I mean, that, that is, that's amazing. Wow. Right? Because like for the rest, the whole rest of that presentation, whether that's 30 minutes or 60 minutes, and when you're sitting in that meeting with the VC, you can then, you know, bring out all the other stuff hmm. um, to make your case. But yeah, no, definitely get to the point like, so way early on. Three minutes. You, you need to leave some time for the entrepreneur to like tell their story and sure. you know just like set the set the table. They so could do it in thirty seconds, like the That'd one that you said better. you were very impressed with. Hey, it's yeah, doable exactly. too. So it that's it looks like that's it. Well, we're we're Perfect. good. I know. We, High five. All right. No. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll high elbow. You, high elbow. All right. All right, so everyone stay tuned because coming up, we uh, for the next session that's coming up, uh, we have sportsmanship and entrepreneurship just as interesting. So everyone Super stay tuned. Exciting. See you around. Bye.